the Shattered Fortress European tour. Could you describe me? What does it feel like to do it? One word. One word. Well, how about one phrase? Strange deja vu. <laughs> it's a it's a strange deja vu for me. So Mike Pornoy, um, welcome to Rock Hawk. Thank you for your time. And My a pleasure. special thank you because it's an after show interview and that doesn't happen a lot. Not only does it not happen a lot, it's never happened. This is my first after show interview. Exclusive. I mean, the re uh, we should probably explain the reason why. We, we drove uh, 14, 15, 16 hours from Sweden. We rolled into this show at, I think we got here at 7.30. That's when doors were supposed to open. Usually we load in around 12 or 2 p.m. Yeah, you were supposed to be here at 3, I think. Yeah, so I have never done a show before where the crew got the stage up in, I think, 40 minutes. It was unbelievable, but because of that, all the press and interviews got canceled, or in this case, postponed until after the show. Sorry, we're scared. So this is the first time I've ever done an after show Thank interview. Thank you very much. So, so I may not have the enthusiasm I usually do. I'm exhausted. You mind if I sleep during your questions? No, okay. <laughs> so oh, was there a lot of stress on the bus, or what happens then? When you're like, oh my no, God. No, no, we're, you know, we're just kind of hanging out, waiting. You know, I guess our tour manager stresses out. Um, but yeah, we're all kind of just sitting around, drinking coffee, watching movies, just patiently waiting to arrive. The Shattered Fortress, it's like some kind of birthday present for yourself. Well, not so much for myself. Um, a birthday present for myself would be to stay home and not tour. <laughs> <laughs> this is a birthday present for the fans. Because you turned 50. Yeah, this is my, uh, April 20th was my 50th birthday. And the, the long answer to this question is, uh, this came about because I was doing a 50th birthday concert on a cruise to the edge. And it was a retrospective concert. So um, I had Flying Colors there, I had Transatlantic there. I did a liquid tension experiment set. And then of course I did, had to do a Dream Theater set. and. Um, the, the idea was for the first time ever I was going to do this 12-step suite that had never been done before. And that was it. It was just going to be for this 50th birthday concert on the cruise. And suddenly, once word got out about that, I get invited to a, a festival in Spain, then a festival in Germany, and then I ended up having, you know, 10 days to fill between the festivals. So, we, you know, there was a bunch of show promoters that offered shows, and then... Next thing I know, we have a South American tour and an Australian tour. So this was never People my intention. People are very interested. I guess, you know, I guess it's, it's very exciting for the fans. Uh, you want to share the deja vu. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've done a lot over the last six and a half years since leaving Dream Theater. But it was always new things with new bands, new experiments, new music, new collaborations. But never really looking back at Dream Theater. So it seemed like, okay... If there's any time to do it, it's my 50th birthday. I did it on the cruise. Let's do it and, you know, give the, the fans a treat to revisit this material with, with, with me on drums. I never thought I'd be playing this music again. Honestly, I didn't know if I would ever play it again. I didn't know how this tour was going to feel. And once we started, the emotions were absolutely overwhelming. And the love from the fans and the audience has been amazing. This has been an amazing experience for all of us. You know, like I said during the show, it, this music is indeed very sacred to me, and I know it's very sacred to the fans, and it was important to put together a band that can not only play this, but play it with conviction, play it with passion, just crush it. And mm -hmm. Haken was the perfect choice, and Eric Gillette uh, added to the to the equation was a, a perfect uh, addition, and here we go. We're, we're, we're having a, a great time. We were watching the show and we were saying like, those guys, Hake and Eric, they nail it. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
I mean, the thing is, um, I think first and foremost, because they all uh, listened to this music, you know, when it was coming out, you know, in the 90s and the 2000s. So it's a part of them as well. You know, they grew up with it. They know this music. So they could play it with passion and conviction. It's not like they're just playing something that they've never heard before. You know, they really mm -hmm. can feel it and they're nailing it. I mean, they know the music better than me. You know, they've been practicing this for, for months Whereas I, you know, I'm... They had to I'm, tell you when, when to beat? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, they've been preparing for this for months, whereas I've been, the last couple months, hopscotching between the Neil Morse Band and Metal Allegiance and my new band with Derek. So I've been doing all these other things the last couple months. I basically showed up for rehearsals like, okay, uh, hmm, how does this go? And I had to go off, the, off of my memory. And luckily, I have a, a really good memory, so it all just came back immediately. The original plan, if I'm not wrong, was to actually do it with the guys from Dream Theater, but no, that, was, that didn't, that didn't was, work out? Or what, that was never the, the story? That was never the plan. I, um, when I first um, uh, you know, came up with the, the, birthday, the 50th birthday concert or whatever, the invitation from Cruise to the Edge, uh, and I started putting together the, you know, I invited Flying Colors, I invited Transatlantic, and I, I, I thought the right thing to do would be to invite the Dream Theater guys as well, you know, and I, so I did extend the invitation, at least to the uh, couple guys that I'm still friendly with, and uh, I wanted to give them first crack at joining me, you know, they are friends of mine for a very, very, very long yeah, time. Yeah, have been in the band for 25 years. So. And we created the music together, so uh, I, of course, extended the invitation to them first and foremost, and then once they, uh, you know, uh, said they were unavailable, uh, that's when I put together this, this great band. But that turned out well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, to be honest, I understand those guys declining the invitation. Yeah. I think it might have been, um, people might have misinterpreted it and might have started to think that there was a reunion yeah. brewing. So yeah. I can understand why they turned it down. And for selfish reasons, for myself, in a way, I kind of liked it as well because if they had come, it suddenly the focus would have been on that. And really, it was mm. supposed to be a celebration of my whole career, you know, with all the different bands and celebrating my 50th birthday. So in a lot of ways, um, it, it turned out okay. Okay, so there's no hard feelings. Uh, I had, No, I, I love those guys. And uh, I, I am, um, you know, I, I always try to... Uh, to extend the olive branch and, and keep the friendship alive. Um, you know, I do my best for that. About um, the setlist of tonight, of course, there's the 12 step suite, which is like the most special thing going on tonight. But you also choose for um, some songs from scenes from a memory. Why is this album so special to you? Uh, well, to be honest with, with you, they're all special to me. Scenes from a memory happens to be one of my favorites. But why is, um, it? Why is it? Yeah. Um, I have a soft spot for co concept albums. So my favorite albums of my career happen to be the, the concept albums, Scenes from a Memory, The Whirlwind with Transatlantic, The Similitude of a Dream with Neil Morse. I just love concept albums. And Scenes from a Memory was made at a time where it was do or die for Dream Theater. We were on the verge of possibly breaking up and we needed, it was, you know, we, that was a, an important album for us. So anyway, but when choosing the set list, um, first and foremost, uh, I narrowed it down to only songs that I wrote lyrics to. Uh, there's about, I don't know, 30-odd songs in the Dream Theater catalog that I wrote the lyrics to. So first and foremost, I um, started with, with those songs. And uh, I originally wanted to do a change of seasons for the encore. That was my master plan. Uh, and then I heard that they're doing it, so that immediately kind of uh, yeah, the, the, scratched the last it. last tour, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's actually very respectful in a way from you. Or shouldn't they have done it on the other hand? Well, that is a song that I wrote the lyrics to, and it's a very personal song to me. I wrote that song about my mother dying in a plane crash, uh, which <laughs> you don't get more personal than that. Uh, so so I they shouldn't have done it, actually. Well, that's for you to judge. That's not for me to publicly judge. Mm. And uh, I just, I would have liked to have done it on this tour and I was planning on it. But uh, once I heard they were, I 
you know, yeah. there's plenty of other music to choose yeah. from, so but it's since fine. This this is such a personal song to you. You won't regret actually that you maybe never won't play it again. No, I <laughs> I have plenty to work with. You know, once we started playing this set list, it was like, wow, this is a great set list. You know. Uh, I did write the lyrics to, you know, all those songs on, that we played tonight mm -hmm. from uh, Scenes from Memory, Strange Deja Vu, Home, Finally Free, those are all my lyrics and vocal melodies. And so I think that's, it was actually a very fulfilling set. It's strange because it, it wasn't intentional, but this entire set list uh, focuses on the Jordan era other than the mirror. So you have the mirror and then everything else is the Jordan era because mm -hmm. the Dream Theater is out there right now doing the Kevin Moore era. And I'm about to embark on a new band with Derek, so I didn't want to incorporate the Derek era here. And uh, I think it's a very fulfilling set list. You know, I looked at it on, on paper, and I was like, is that enough songs? But, like, once we started playing it, it was like, man, this is a complete fulfilling set. And everybody leaves the shows just completely satisfied. Mm -hmm. 